I've been there with the whole not doing yoga for a year, believe it or not. Now that I'm a yoga teacher, I feel like that was ages ago, but it's really easy to fall out of that routine, right? And especially today with our incredibly busy lifestyles, often the first thing to go is a process that actually makes you want to slow down and pause. So I recommend starting really, really slowly. Uh, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 15 minutes, whatever you can carve out the time for. My recommendation is to actually do it first thing in the morning, as soon as you get out of bed. And what I start to do when I first wake up is I do three sun salutations, sun A and sun B. And if that's all I can do for the day, that's all I can do for the day and that's enough. So crow pose is definitely a shape that you'll find in so many yoga practices, um, whether you're taking a vinyasa level one class or whether you're taking an Ashtanga class or whatever you're taking. So it is a, a really great pose to practice. What I always remind my students of is that every shape in yoga is Tadasana. Yeah, so every shape is mountain pose, just standing upright, right? Everything is stacked. So the roof of your mouth is over your rib cage, your rib cage is over the bowl of the pelvis. Every shape that you do in yoga actually has an element of Tadasana in it. So something is stacked. And in the case with crow pose, something that's really important is actually getting your elbows directly over your wrists. If your elbows are not over your wrists, sorry kids, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, if you're gonna either lean too far forward and you'll end up on your nose, which don't worry, the floor's not that far away, or you'll end up back, yeah? So you need to just find that sweet spot of getting the elbows directly over the wrists. And of course, Core strength does indeed help. Thinking belly button to spine will help you lift up in the crow. Um, and yes, arm strength is a part of it, but it really is just a stacking of the joints. So all these arm balance questions, it really does go back to that Tadasana, right? That stacking of the joints. What I want you to do is not worry about getting off the wall, but using it in a really effective way. Most of us, when we do handstands, we do them so we place our hands by the wall and then we just flop up and our legs hit the wall, but that's actually not the shape. That makes you into kind of like a banana shape. You're arching your back. Your ribs are sticking out and you're not engaged and you're not stacking the joints like you would in Tadasana. So actually what I want you to do is do a short down dog facing away from the wall. You'll plant the hands down shoulder width distance and you'll actually climb your feet up the wall so that you're creating the letter L with your body. From there, you'll just lift one leg up and you'll feel that sacred geometry once again that I keep referring to, but it's so imperative. So what I want you to do is lift that leg up. You'll feel the stacking of the joints. The leg comes over the pelvis. The pelvis is over the shoulders. The shoulders are over the wrists. And from there, you can start to play with maybe coming onto the toe and back down and up a little bit further and back down. And you can do that same thing with forearm balance or headstand. So use the wall, but use it in an efficient way. So meditation can be tough, right? It's something that most of us know is really good for us, but don't always want to do it. But I, I actually like to think of meditation as like taking your vitamins. It's not something that you only do when you're sick, right? It's not something like, oh, I have a cold, I should take Tylenol or whatever. It's like vitamin M and it's something that you need to take on the regular. Um, and start really small. I don't care if it's 30 seconds of just sitting and breathing. I actually have a timer on my phone. It's like an alarm clock that goes off every day at 11 a.m. reminding me to, to meditate. If you can do it first thing in the morning, I highly recommend that. But of course, we all have lifestyles that sometimes don't forgive that, whether you have kids or whether you have to run to work or whatever the case may be. Um, so set that timer and do your best to stay as true to it as you can, but also really practice forgiveness with yourself, right? If you didn't hit the cushion or the mat that day, it's okay. You get a do-over tomorrow. <laughs> no biggie. Um, you get as many do-overs as you need, um, but just know that it Making a commitment to meditation doesn't have to be like an hour. It can be five, two minutes, yeah? Do it. Oh, are we recording? <laughs> well, I like to call it pigeon. First of all, it's pigeon. <laughs>